Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. I start with the name of Allah, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. In the name of Allah, all praise be to Allah, and peace and blessings be on His last messenger, our most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is another episode on our series of dua. Um, inshallah, today we'll talk about some of the times that are uh, likely uh, to be times uh, prime for dua, times where dua is accepted. And uh, last uh, in the last episode, we did mention some of those times. We said that the last hour before Maghrib on the day of Al Jama'ah, Friday. Uh, is one of them. We said the last one third of the night is one of them. We said that Ramadan and the first 10 days of the Al Hajjah, uh, Ramadan would be certainly particularly in the last 10 days and most particularly uh, on uh, Laylat Al Qadr. And we also said that um, it's not only about the, the times, it's also about the condition. If you are in distress, it is. A, a time for making dua because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to you. Allah says, who, and who would answer the one in distress when he calls upon him uh, and relieves the hardship. If you are oppressed by a tyrant or oppressed by a wrongdoer or an evil person or a wicked person, you are more likely to have your dua accepted as well. The Prophet ﷺ said that the da'wah or the supplication of the one who is oppressed, even if he was a dis- disbeliever, even if he was a disbeliever, you see how, how powerful the supplication of the one who is oppressed is, the supplication of the oppressed, even if he was a disbeliever, shall not be rejected, shall not be rejected. So that's another uh, condition in, in which the dua is more likely to be accepted. If you're traveling, if you're sick, if you're visiting someone who's sick, all of these are conditions in which dua is, is accepted. If you are engaged in worship, if you are in sujood, particularly, that's the position where you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you should make a lot of dua in sujood because you are very close to Allah and you do not get closer to Allah in any other position. That's the position where you are the closest to Allah as indicated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, when you are waiting for the Salah, when you go to the Masjid after the, the Adhan and while you're waiting for the Salah, your Dua is likely to be accepted as well. Uh, uh, there are many other uh, times and places and conditions where the Dua is likely uh, to be accepted. We mentioned sometimes in some uh, conditions, as far as places, certainly the dua is more likely to be accepted in places that are virtuous, in places that are noble, and uh, these places would be the places of al-haram, the, the haram and uh, arafah and uh, mish'ar al-haram and muzdarifa, and in these places the dua is more likely to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now there are times, there are places, and there are conditions in which the dua is more likely to be accepted. Yet, let me remind you, as I said, uh, before I even started talking about the the best times and and conditions, that we must make dua at all times. We must make dua for everything in all times. Uh, uh, But we if we, you know, seek those particular times to make more dua in those particular times, that is good and that's preferable and that is prescribed. Now, we prepared ourselves, as we said in the first time, we prepared ourselves, we aligned ourselves with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we made wholesome our provisions, our food, our drink, our clothes, we uh, chose the right time to make dua. We made dua in all circumstances and all times. Uh, the next would be to try to uh, make your dua after you had um, uh, done some righteousness. After you have done some some righteousness. 
We do understand this from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu It's a famous hadith in which he described three different people who went into a cave and the uh, boulder came and obstructed their exit out of the cave. And each one of them started to make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to invoke Allah mentioning the one greatest deed or the one deed they thought to be their greatest uh, deed uh, in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And every time someone makes dua, the boulder would move a little bit, but they did not have uh, the exit cleared until the third person uh, make, made his dua and then the exit of the cave uh, was clear and they were able to uh, come out. Now, we have done this. We have uh, tried to uh, give some charity. We have uh, made some prayers. We are fasting. We have done some righteousness and we want to make dua. The next step, uh, and certainly these are all etiquettes. These are all things that are preferable. You do not need to do all of this to make du'a. You can make du'a at all times, as I said. But uh, try to do of this as much as you can. Try to do of those uh, uh, things that are prescribed and preferable as much as you can. The next would be to make ablution. And it was reported by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari that when the Prophet ﷺ wanted to make a certain du'a, he asked for water and washed, made ablution, and then he made his dua. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that making ablution is uh, one of the things that would make your dua more likely to be accepted. So now, what are the etiquettes uh, that we have discussed so far? Prepare yourself by aligning yourself with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, make dua at, in all times. Make dua for things that are big and small. Uh, the other thing is to seek the times where dua is most likely to be accepted. The virtuous times, virtuous places, and the conditions that, uh, uh, in which dua is, is more likely uh, to be accepted. Uh, do some righteousness before you make dua and the last would be to make ablution inshallah in the next episode we will uh, go over some other etiquettes of uh, dua and some of the other things that are prescribed and preferable to do uh, before or while you are making uh, your dua until I see you then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and enjoy the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his favor is upon you. Oh.